Yes, we have a fun episode for you tonight. Got back uh, two of our favorites, the mainstays. Sarah's on a hiatus for a little while. Kalei and Corey. We yeah. have a handful of amazing geeks tonight to share with you. So let's start off with these two. And uh, why don't you guys try to play something together on them and then and then talk about uh, them individually. Yeah. Sure. Song. I like it in G. It's fun. It's pretty fun. It was I the first time I ever played it in G. We always played it in C, right? Yeah. Did, did we play it in C all the time, right? All the time it was always in C. So I was like, how do we... Oh, because you, you would play it up here, right? Yeah. So when he told me to take the lead, I was actually literally transposing. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, it's like, it was like, like probably, oh. yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a challenge. What do you think about the U? The U? I mean... Sounds everything like an EV should sound like awesome. <laughs> I mean, nice full sound, terrified spruce, mahogany back and sides. It's kind of a really orange mahogany. I like that. Yeah, it's it's unique. It's different. You know, because normally mahogany is more on like a darker brown kind of color, depending on what kind of mahogany it is. But yeah, this is really nice mahogany. <laughs> it almost has like. That Cuban mahogany. Kind so of. I was thinking, it's like, nope, this is just plain, normal mahogany. It's but hard to awesome. Did he put like a little bit of stain on it or, or something? I don't know. Nah, that's regular Honduran mahogany. I mean, he's probably been aging it for years. Oh, mm. that's right. You said he had it for like 20 years. That's right. And then um, it's got, what, walnut bindings and faceplate. Oh. I was wondering what kind of wood this is. Like on the on the binding, is it kind of greenish? It is, yeah. It's like a gray kind of, kind of like gray it's walnut, brown, a bit of green hue to it. But it, it's a nice look. The grain lines are super. Well, I mean, even on this one, what I like about Torfite Spruce is like the grain lines are super defined after after it's cooked. Let's get a, a sound sample on this guy. 
I can't realize that this is for me. Man, it's got a warm sound. It's almost Very like warm. it's been aged. It's been torrified. Yeah, I guess it has been <laughs> terrific. <laughs> it's very terrific. <laughs> it is really warm. Yeah. Warm and bright at the same time. It's like nice and warm. It's almost like you just want to hear chords coming out of it. It's good, I guess. Um, when Charlie stopped by earlier, I was like, it's warm and mellow, but very clear at the same time. He's like, mm. yeah, it's... What happens when you use Torfai groups? Very clear, very well pronounced notes. Very, I don't know, the, it reproduces the high end notes in a different way, in a better way, I guess you can say. But it's all subjective. Oh, I like what I'm Maybe, It's not as deep sounding as other EDP tenders we've had, but. Yeah, because like. He sent us like others with like more hardwood back in sides, so, like a harder, yeah, yeah, denser yeah. set than you know mahogany. Although I've heard mahogany can get like it can be pretty solid. It can be pretty solid like rosewood and <clears throat> uh, ebony. But yeah, sounds like some bro science. <laughs> <laughs> well, it came from like builders. <laughs> yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was like oh. no, it's just the way you guys are like. Yeah, mahogany can be pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mahogany, uh, <laughs> totally, mahogany solid, bro. right? It's yeah, like a, a totally solid. Uh, one time I tried oh. <laughs> to like punch through a door and it was mahogany. It's like Forget solid mahogany, it. bro. I just like bottomed out my fist, <laughs> completely just shattered by <laughs> yeah, right. all the bones in my hand. <laughs> oh, you won't be able to. After that, I was like, all right, don't mess with mahogany. <laughs> It smells so, good. Though. So where's the mahogany memes? Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm only punching spruce now. <laughs> no cedar, because <laughs> it's softer. <laughs> I don't know, but which one sounds better? Yeah. Mm. I think if you punch spruce, it probably sound brighter. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about recording the punch. <laughs> That's not a bright idea. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. That's, that's a good point, though. I believe that door <laughs> is solid mahogany. I think it's heavy. Yeah, bro, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take different wood doors and we're gonna punch them and record it. Which one sounds better? We gotta hire Aaron. For it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Give me like the ultimate bro guy. All right, bros, we're going to test out these doors. I mean, obviously, he's the one that's going to punch them. <laughs> Which one will withstand the test of these fists? <laughs> oh, man, my, my days of punching doors and walls are over. I would hope so. I don't think it ever really started. <laughs> I tried it once. I was like, wow, that was, that was a bad idea. Yeah. I don't think I should ever do that again. I'll punch some drywall. <laughs> any day, any day. <laughs> don't hit a stud. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> if you want to feel really good about yourself, you just punch through some drywall. <laughs> I'm tough. Just play some music. Okay.
That sounded super good. Oh, the uke sounds good. <laughs> hey, Clay, grab the case that that was in there. Oh yeah. To show. So we got in um a, a few new versions. You guys know the olive tweed, um. Case that we've been doing with the Oahu Case Company. Oahu Case Company is ours, and we don't wholesale it, so um, we can give the best prices direct to customer for cases. So try give them a little, give them a little uh, demo. Down. We call this coffee tweed here. I'm gonna. I actually like this color. Yeah. So. Thick wood arch top for thick wood. Yeah, I mean these are like strong. You can uh, you could step on this thing and your you could be okay, but the case would probably suffer a touch. But don't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't try it, but I believe this would survive if you threw it out of a moving car. Show the interior. <laughs> and here's the interior. So. All of you who are familiar with the olive tweet knows that that case has a fairly unique interior. Such same with kind of like the deer skin, but you get this emerald green, velvety kind of look to it on the inside, and I think it pairs and looks really great with the the coffee color of the case. This would be something I would get for myself, and as you can see, it looks even better when there's a nice ukulele inside. Yeah, get yours today. Yeah, watch. <laughs> Next week, Kala's gonna release their own coffee tweed somehow. <laughs> oh, they did that with our They always tweet. do that. Okay. Um, this is what, second or third? Second. Yeah. Second soprano that we got from EEV. The 1879 model. 1879 model. So it has the, the Hawaiian coat of arms logo on the headstock, inlaid in maple. Very well done as always, with Goto tuners, planetary all black tuners. I like the black tuners; they're just oh, all it's clean, super sleek. Um, I don't know, it just it matches really well with the the rest of the instrument. Um, torfied spruce top, super thick grain lines. I really like. I even noticed too with like the sopranos, he still continues with his signature bell-like shape yeah and i don't know i think with this one it's supposed to mimic the Nune old nunez yeah. ukulele style with the rope binding rope purfling um you got the rope inlay even on the fretboard it's a contemporary uke with a nice vintage flair to it let me see if you can see um, <laughs> that was a nice little word salad there. <laughs> <laughs> I love word salads. <laughs> Ebony bridge fretboard. Um, satin finish, super nice, even, very nice touch on the fingers. Just this whole thing, just so fun to play. Like what Charlie was saying when he was here earlier. It's like I don't know. It's just so fun. Like I pick it up. I'm like, yeah, immediately. <laughs> Like, this thing is just, I'm not really, you know, I never started on a soprano. I never really liked the soprano size. But, I mean, when you come across a good one, right? Oh, let's see, if, like, if the builder is, is loving it, then you know it's going to be a good ukulele. <clears throat> yeah. It sings really well. It's a koa back and sides. Forgot to mention that. Sustain. It's pretty impressive. Wow. You know what it kind of reminds me of is one of those um, uh, those rare vintage Martin ukuleles. It has a vintage sound to it for sure. Yeah, this one reminds me of the one we played in Japan in Kenichi shop. Oh yeah, Remember when he That's busted true. that one out, it was like oh yeah, super huge sounding. Yeah, this one reminds me of that. I mean, that one was something else, <laughs> but <laughs> it, this one has that that characteristic.
crazy. This would, this would be a really good ukulele to play um, John King stuff. I know, I was just about to suggest that. finger picking oh, Christmas is over but he did a really good arrangement <laughs> it's loud huh it is. it is it definitely doesn't sound like a soprano yeah I mean volume wise it's it can hang with it song. carries itself yeah. really well very well and I like how it has that classic punchy soprano sound without that being, being too like, harsh, yeah. yeah, or too muddy or too, too, too punchy, yeah. or anything. It's it's kind of a nice balance. It's like it'll punch, but not through a wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a door, maybe drywall. <laughs> maybe drywall <laughs> with no stuff. <laughs> Just damn. Only screws, no lock. <laughs> <laughs> Torfied, it kind of weakens it, right? Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Give it. Give me another um, sample that's not finger picking. Yeah. Is that uh, the sounds make many words? Hey, um, that one was in a soprano yeah, gig so bag. So this is the new gig bag we just brought in. This is the Ikaiko oh, series. Put the uke in there yeah. while you're at it. See how it fits. Fits very well. Very nice, snug finish. I was just showing this to a customer in store today, and like the inside is so soft. I know. Feels really good. Soft and bouncy. It'll absorb like all the shock. Yeah. And the one thing I really like about this. It's like a this, microfiber. Yeah. 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 That's what it feels like. It's like when you're done playing, you just rub I your ukulele mean, on your case and then it's clean. <laughs> or you got to buff out your car. You got to wipe out your car. Finish. You just rip this off and get a nice buffing rag. And this is super soft. And it's nice that it has the spots for your, where your strings won't damage it. Like yeah. it's reinforced on mm. that panel there. What's cool, like, usually what you see in cases or gig bags that have the, the straps that hold them in, they're kind of flimsy. Yeah, maybe not flimsy, but kind of... They kind of skimp out on the strap. Yeah, you know, they, don't, or they don't really... The design. Does it feel like, yeah. This one, very thick. The neck rest is like, this thing is beefy. And you know this thing is going to hold your uke inside very well. Um, these zippers are like indestructible. 
they look like titanium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, inside there's a uh, lining that's super, super stiff, very rigid. Yeah, it's reinforced with panels. There. Yeah. This is super cool. I saw it. I was like, hey, it has like, these cool feet. <laughs> so like, when you really put it on the ground, it's like, especially if it's like there's a puddle, it's not going to make the whole case wet. Or you, you can you can set it down and it sits without just falling over, you know. Mm. And then these are waterproof, right? Yep. Waterproof cases. You can get them damp, wet. You don't have to worry about the ukulele getting soggy on the inside. The handle is Keeps. pretty trick, too. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it, it uh, pulls pulls out and recedes back in for like a really nice clean look gonna do the honors of removing the plastic off the oh that takes a minute actually because you got to get your fingernails under there <laughs> oh wow it wasn't as easy as i thought it was gonna be <laughs> no fingernails that's why yeah <laughs> i mean this thing is like glued on or like they shrink wrapped it on or something. yeah it was, it was, it was super Super, super elegant looking emblem from Oahu. It says Oahu Case Company on here. Very nice cursive, which I forgot how to write. And um, everything, all the, the hooks, the straps, um, they're the straps to, you know, if even if you sweat, like they'll dry quickly or they won't, mm. you know, they'll kind of prevent you from sweating, which is really nice. <laughs> I'm just thinking, what? I know right. I don't know about that. Right, well, it's, it's breathable. Aerated, yeah, it's right. breathable. It's breathable. It dries really quick. It, it wicks as a like a air wick. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, it kind of um, reminds me of the straps on the old Reunion blue case. Solid. I like this color of green. What is? What should we go with? This is like forest green. It's like yeah, olive camel green. green. Olive <laughs> green, camel green. Then this nice. This is the kind of. I don't know. Almost teal. Hot blue. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one, like the Toyota version, is that deep blue? That one's nice. Do you have but a Wailua nice. red? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, look at that handle. This is a... the, the main color is trip, too. Uh, it's kind of almost a purplish hue to the brown. You gotta, like, you can't just get any ordinary ukulele and stick it in here. It has to be. Nah, you can put <laughs> anything in there. Anything will fit, but that's definitely something I would get if I, you know, spent a few, fair amount of money on a purchase. Yeah, it's you know, cool. This buy like a, right here. a Macala and then get that. <laughs> <laughs> like, the case is more expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of tight in here, but you know you can put your spare set of strings, um, backpack straps, ready to travel. Let's go. <laughs> and then I don't know, those uh, guns are too too big for the straps. I want to call them guns. <laughs> Stop flexing. Like flabs. Stop. Stop flexing. <laughs> God, just, <laughs> we're just trying to sell you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> trying to strum, I can't move my arm. But yeah, come on, the yes. Ikaika series, sexy cells. <laughs> Show those guns and again, sexy. <laughs> Corey's oh, yeah. in <laughs> See these uh, very, oh my goodness. very well defined <laughs> lines here. Making a sweat uh, over here. Yeah, you know, um, as you can see, right on these. Crap. <laughs> yeah, you gotta like get the mm. tricep. Mm. <laughs> you know, when you're playing back here. <laughs> <laughs> Show yeah. the other color. Oh so, gosh. available in two colors and all sizes. This is the Olino Lino model. So, Ikaika in Hawaiian is like, I think it's strong or it's tough. Strong. Like, uh, Olino Lino is like radiant or shiny. And, so, uh, that, very so that one has yeah this is kind of perfect naming for lively it. is that like a sea foam green kind of yeah. color or do you know what that that color or um, what shade of green is or blue the main color does look kind of sea foam yeah mm. and then i don't know the piece in the middle almost looks like it's getting towards a kelly green or something like that or tiffany blue or something like that whoa whoa, whoa. whoa. i don't whoa. even know about these Get colors it. tiffany I, I don't think i'm ever on that <laughs> level <laughs> i didn't know she was a certain color <laughs> hey i don't know when i think tiffany i think more of like a red really no, no i don't know yeah maybe oh maybe. wasn't there know. a singer in the 80s with red hair uh I think there was a lot of red hair. No, um, named Tiffany. <laughs> I think she was one of those one names. It's like oh, Madonna. Oh, Tiffany as the... I, I should know this. My wife has a Tiffany ring. Well, that's also a jewelry store. Yeah. 
but that color reminds me of the overall because if you have the brochure like it has like this coloring to it this grayish mm. not not this part actually maybe i don't know what are you talking about i don't even know from the tiffany brochure yeah. <laughs> oh okay i was like brochure for the, the case i was the like product oh. brochure. <laughs> anyways we got in three world-class petros this week and uh two of them are his very first baritones and pretty awesome let's uh let's get you two to play something on them yeah isn't that beautiful uh, i almost thought it was like i don't know something else it's gorgeous it's gorgeous cedar i only picked sure i only picked yeah redwood sinker red uh redwood top oh let's take a look Damn. What do they say here? Oh, God. <laughs> Just the one string. Oh, they probably right? didn't put that on it. Oh. If only um, the pandemic didn't hit last year, I might have enough money to buy this. <laughs> yeah, I probably have, like. I probably would. Like, I like, would have done like <laughs> Can I just uh, do the sound top boy and hand you the cash, please? <laughs> All I did was just hit an open G, and right away I knew there's something um, special going on with these vertical's. Because for like over the past like years, I've been comparing like all the baritones I've tried to my pono that I have at home. Which sometimes it's not a fair comparison because the, my pono has been played and opened up and aged, you know. So, but this sounds like something that's been like played for like ten plus years. Ah, this like, one in my is... opinion a buttery kind of tone to it. Yeah. Buttery. <laughs> Not slippery. Buttery. <laughs> but it's, it's such a round sound. It's like... When you're... Are, are, is this nylon strings? I'm very curious to see how it sounds with like Did a you floor get the carpet nylon? set. Did you get no, but if, if glow was a sound...
Oh, love those spontaneous jams. Two chords. It, it could have went for, for another 20 minutes. You know? I, yeah, I know. I was wondering how long you guys were going to go. Hour easy. Minimum. <laughs> it's like the sound of those. It's almost like you're hearing it inside the body. Yeah, it's like, it's like it has this like kind of... Uh, it's almost like your head is... like You just stick your face inside of the sound. Yeah, and right? just listen to it. It's just like... Whoa. Such a sound that just... Like, for cert- certain instruments, I can feel like it's not... You know, parts of the instrument are, like, vibrating more than other parts. So it's like, with the... Uh, every time we play a uh, Petros, I can feel the whole body is singing. Mm, yeah. The whole thing is vibrating when you're playing it. You can even feel it. Like, the whole like, thing. The neck part. Like, if you, if you like when I strum this chord, I can feel all of that transferring into the neck and actually feel it in my hands. I was like, whoa. They're light and weight too. So, this really? thing is alive. Yeah. But show, um, show the wall. Let's do individual sound samples on these. So, the walnut is freaking gorgeous. Oh, this is gorgeous. Has to be. Like as soon as we brought, took it out of the case, I was like, oh, that kind of looks like Claro walnut. <laughs> okay, you go first, Kalei. Is it oh. the same? No, not the same log, right? Or I don't know. Probably. Is it? I mean. Could just be probably the same set, right? I mean, there's this really nice dark reddish, purplish, maybe not purple, but really nice thick thing going on right here. <laughs> no, it's not quite. It's not a knot. Not a knot. It's not a knot. It's not not it's a not knot. It's not a knot. Actually, it could be a knot. Could not be a knot. <laughs> what are you talking about? You see the, the wood. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, There's that yeah. really dark part right there. That is such a beautiful set. You might not be wrong. <laughs> oh. Maybe not. <laughs> These have his Polynesian inlay style. Yeah, there's like the Honus as the fret markers. And it looks to me that is a uh, Is it a wood inlay? Mhm. So if you look at it up and close, um, you'll see that the fret dots over here on the fingerboard are all little honus or turtles. And <clears throat> this is a very beautiful baritone. It's probably becomes like top three baritones I've ever played. <laughs> um, sinker redwood top. And then you got the, of course, the... <clears throat> The, the, the petrol style inlays going around like the body and the purfling, the rosette. And one thing I like about this one, he kind of kept like a lot of the inlays and the bindings and the rosettes more on the simpler. Yeah, it's not we, we've seen some that's like, whoa, flashy. Like, how did you Bam. do that? You know, but if you look over here on the along the rosette, you'll see, you know, some tribal, maybe some tiki faces inside as well. And when you turn it around, that's when you really see the beauty of this ukulele really start catching your eye because the walnut is used for the back and sides. And you can see a lot of detail with the theme going on, even on the, the back um, strip. And it's been inlaid right here in the middle, as you can see. Everything's perfectly like book matched. And this is this thing is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is there's no just, part of the instrument that's there's not nothing out. bad I can say about this because for one it's a phenomenal baritone two it's built by a phenomenal luthier and also well respected so. wait the sound ports are in different or side ports are in different really? areas oh I just realized that oh yeah Interesting. They say when the sound, you, you, when, it, when it bounces off the nose, it can actually vibrate and you can hear it through your ears. Off the nose? Wait, no, wait. I'm just joking. I was just like, I was like, um. That's the case. I get the best sound. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot more to bounce on. There's, there's, there's actually something involved with that where, like, the sound vibrates at a certain thing. It it also vibrates the hair inside of your, the, the ear where you pick up sound, right? Yeah. Um, it's supposed to travel through your 
something with your nose. I forget. Too much bro science. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back to uke science. <laughs> yeah. But this one, because it's it's shooting up at your nose. Oh. <laughs> uh, then you can. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your stank face. <laughs> oh, this one is always just. Yeah, it's just like you stank water. It's just, it's just like right on my nose. Smells <laughs> 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 like a barbecue. <laughs> I don't know, this is, to me, this is one of those instruments that, like, you don't want to really play a whole lot because all you want to do is listen to it. Just listen to that system. It's still going. It's still going. It's like the voice of the angels, but they're oh, like... Oh, now it's finally... They're like plus-sized mm. angels. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what heaven sounds like. <laughs> No, wait, wait, you gotta do the, um, what was it? Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is that um, angelic mold. It's, you know, it's heavenly. No, it's, it's all bass. No, you gotta play no the perfect. Hawaiian Airlines. <laughs> oh. Thank you for flying Hawaiian Air. Aloha. <laughs> Welcome Aloha. Aloha. And thank you for flying Hawaiian Airlines. Oh, Corey, do your pilot <laughs> and impression. So, thank you for uh, flying with uh, Hawaiian Airlines. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm going to be your uh, pilot. Uh, <laughs> today on uh, tonight's dinner menu, we got a uh, manapua. <laughs> that doesn't happen. I had a monopole one time. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't joking. It was bad. It was terrible. I mean, like I was saying, like, when he was announcing, he kind of laughed. He kind of giggled. He's like, uh, tonight's menu, uh, we're having a monopole. <laughs> I was like, even, even he thought it was ridiculous. A freaking monopole. And then on top of it, wheat bread monopole. It's an abomination. Oh. Uh, tonight's weather in uh, Honolulu. It's a nice, uh, chilly 68, uh, <laughs> lower 62% humidity. And, uh, hmm.
was only playing like oh two chords. <laughs> I know, it sounded like I had like some extra magic juju going on here. It's like, I was like, wow, that sounds so perfect. I love it when the instrument does majority of the work. <laughs> we, everything just gets so much easier to do. One of them is sounding good. <laughs> it's just really balanced. It's not as like... There's something so soothing about baritone. Oh. I don't know. People say, oh, that's just a, a four string guitar. No, it's not. It's still an ukulele. No, but like the feeling you get, it's almost like it feels like my blood pressure lowers a little bit when I start <laughs> to hear it. I mean, it's a warm tone. Yeah. Because it's different than guitar. You know, it's guitar tuning, but it's like a shorter scale than guitar. So it's, it's a more relaxed kind of a... There's like a glowing kind of sound. Mm. To to like the whole thing that it has its own overtone yeah. with itself. I guess the lower tension lend, lends itself too to just like chill finger style kind of stuff. Oh you know? yeah, it's a certain frequency. It hits that nothing. I mean, like sometimes I hear it in like a um, a Chuck Moore, or something like that. Sometimes like a Koala even like one of the higher range stuff. Um, I guess frequencies or sound. I don't know how to really explain it. It's just really that adds to like the overall smooth mm -hmm. sound that you get. There's a Jesus frequency. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of the angels. The thick angels. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> the thick angels. The plus size <laughs> angels. I'm like, what? Is this like what? a Man, this is like a, a parallel universe Victoria's Secret kind of <laughs> vision going on. Kind of the same sound. The strings are... Did we figure out that the strings are different? Are they the same sound? I, I gotta ask. I know I should be informed here. but Here, let's trade real quick. But I... Oh yeah, actually... Clay, why don't you give us a, a sound sample there of the balance? <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get Corey to do both of them too from where it's he's at. It's different, yeah? Oh, yeah. I thought they sounded really different too. Maybe it's the string set. Does, I feel like one of them might have had nylon and one had fluorocarbon. What do you guys think? I think this is the fluorocarbon one. Oh, I was like, thinking the other way. Right. Uh, does the strings feel the same to you, Clay? Hey, they feel slightly different. Softer, right? Is it yeah, softer? this one's like a little bit softer. Maybe it could just be the... Is the action on both of them the same? No. This one's higher. Yeah, one of them has higher action and more dynamic range from the higher action, you know? Oh, and maybe that's why that one feels like, like a higher tension string because of the action. Possible, yeah. So it, so yeah, so probably like about earlier. Because this... I don't know. I probably wouldn't want to go lower than this. I mean, yeah. If if anything, we might want to raise it up on that one a little bit. But, but if if you like that super butter, you know, low action feel, that thing is really. It feels good. Yeah, really sweet. I'm a big fan of butter. I would just maybe raise the action slightly on the A. I think that's about it. what I would. Yeah. We've only played Petro's ukuleles with super low action, so I wonder yeah, what would happen. If we kind of put it just get louder sound. and beef. You have more room to dig in when you get higher action, you know. Yeah. And I'll probably take away from that smooth kind of sound you get, right? But you know, with this one, all you would have to do is put on like a hard tension ukulelic set. It would oh, you know, yeah. Pull the neck up a tiny bit. And it would be perfect. I think it would work really nice.
know. I think it's because like because the action is lower. When the action is lower, I tend to play slightly softer. And when you play mm. softer, it does warm it up a little bit. Um, that's Which one thing mean? I noticed. Right, right, right. But <clears throat> Corey, let me let, let's get you on uh, individual sample on do one. And then you want me to record from here or sit over there? No, no, no. Okay. From from there, we'll get both. Do they have numbers inside, or is it just on the 2021? 2021. Oh, on the um, the heel block. Uh, it says number seventy. Yeah. What is yours? Number seventy. Sixteen. Nah. Sixty-nine. Hey. 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 One below below seventy. <laughs> <laughs> So the 69 is the one with lower action? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's lower. Because the 70 is above. Uh, I mean, they're both low action, but like the 69 is like, if you got arthritis or something, it'll be perfect. But then if you play really dynamic, you might want to raise it up a bit. Yeah. Or put on a heavier tension string. Having a hard time like not playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it a minor? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um. this one better Number I do like that one better 70 just yeah but I think it's just because it's got slightly higher action I'll try the same thing let's see don't oh actually did you? sorry
I don't know, maybe I like this one. I'm gonna give uh, Kalea the tenor here first. Good? No, I was just like, I was just like, okay, Kalei, just keep the beat, keep the beat, stop, don't get distracted. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I literally was like about to like lean over and just like, what? Tap <laughs> yours? It, it makes so much yeah. sound. The sound is very audible sound. <laughs> yeah, it does show how resonant these bodies are. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Guys, just showing off already. Oh. All right, Kali. Yeah. Tunnel 13. All right, so we have a very special tenor ukulele from Bruce Petros. Petros ukulele. This comes with a very special redwood top, also known as Tunnel 13, that is actually a piece of history that came from an old railroad that was built in the 1880s. So this wood has been preserved and aged um, very, like, thoroughly. And there's a really unique story behind how this wood was acquired. So we'll make sure we have the story in the description. And you can find out more information about it there. Overall, this ukulele is phenomenal. Um, I've had the, the chance and opportunity to play a, a few Petros ukuleles. Yeah bunch of times and you know it's always a real treat because not only do they sound good but you look at the detail of his work um, there's pretty much 
hidden details that you won't really see too much unless you actually look at it up close and personal and you'll find that you know it's very beautiful and I'm pretty sure that anybody who owns an ukulele from Petros would truly appreciate the amount of work and passion that he puts into building these ukuleles so let's give this a little sound sample and we all know the reason why we love playing Petros very much <clears throat> Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> they sound good. Because they sound good. If it sounds good, it plays good, and it looks good, I mean, there's really nothing bad you can say about it. I got to read an excerpt of on uh, Andrew White Guitars, his website, um, about Tano 13 and 14 Redwood. It's, it's yeah, kind of yeah. funny. Okay, so, as many of you probably know, these woods come from the reclaimed Redwood beams that were once used to support the tunnels of the Southern Pacific Railroad in Oregon. The tunnels were constructed using virgin redwood timbers. Well, virgin redwood timbers, that's hard to say. In the 1880s. Wood that has since spent over a century air drying. Uh, the difference is Tunnel 13 was the site of the last great American train robbery. Which wasn't exactly great, unless you consider using an ex... <laughs> Using an excess amount of dynamite to blow up the mail car, killing the mail clerk and all of the witnesses, and ultimately causing a fire that would make the robbery impossible, a particularly great robbery. Tunnel 14 didn't have quite such an accursed history, just some sweet, sweet redwood beams. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting story. I tried to laugh. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> but yeah, it was the... Last great American train robbery for Tunnel yeah. 13. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's what we have in the Certificate of Authenticity. <laughs> right here. I guess it wasn't successful. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, it was. This, this is a very. This wood can make a very successful sounding. Cool. <laughs> I mean, that whole thing. <clears throat> just, it's fascinating, though. Like to. Think about yourself as one of those guys that was like gonna make the train heist, yeah. and that you're like a, all nervous the night before. <laughs> like we're gonna do it. That's like Ocean's One, <laughs> <laughs> the very first Ocean's One. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna rob this train, bros. Full of cash. It turns out it was just a mail train. Ah, oh. poor guys. Yeah. Oh. Fast forward to Ocean's Eleven. They finally, they yeah, finally it's got it. Great <laughs> grandfather. Yeah. I love the sound of this uke. It's very balanced. I mean, it's just rich. I mean, it's like it still has like that petro sound, but there's more. But there's such a sheen to the yeah. like high frequency. It's like got that brilliance too. And you're saying like that brightness and that clarity is because the the overall redwood that was in Tunnel 13, the the wood set is stiffer, right? Yeah. So I mean that that adds to it. Doesn't have the, the same characteristic thing. of like normal redwood. Right, you? right. Yeah, it, it's got like. Um, a little more definition yeah. than I hear in most redwoods. But it's still got that spacious redwood sound. Yeah. But it's very, a little more refined. There's not many redwood sounds very, very warm. Almost bordering Almost, muddy, right? Yeah, kind yeah. of darkish. But yeah, kind of darkish. That's the thing. It's, it's got the redwood sound, but it sounds uplifting. It doesn't sound dark. It doesn't sound nice. too dark. It's like yeah, yeah. It, it's got the overtones. Oh, yeah. Compared to those other redwood tops, even. This is way clearer. This is a good studio ukulele. Yeah.
That that is definitely an ukulele to record with. I like uh, yeah, like you, a and you can album. tell too. Like the notes just hang out there as long as you want them. Exactly. You know, it's like you're just you got your you have the ability to let it ring. Yeah. And it yeah it, it yeah. rings even like I love this chord on this ukulele. Oh, that's thick. Any of the higher ones oh. you're playing. Give me like these. Like, to play like the high G. <laughs> this is insane. Damn. All these overtones. That's the voice of the regular angels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> what do you mean regular? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know. It has its own reverb, it's so good. I know, it's just like, oh. Like, if, if you were to plug this, or record with this, I don't think you'd want to add too much effects. You wouldn't even have to, like, EQ it much. Yeah. Let me, let me get in on that. Hey, let me get you guys to switch seats, just to, um, have the same. So, um, the, the station that Clay's been playing at just FYI. These are Josephson C C six one seven mics. Um, they're like what you could be considered as reference mics in terms of like how true they are, uneq'd, um, flat response, high quality, without giving you anything than what you get. Um, on the other station where Corey was at, where Kalei's going to go to now, is the Sheps. Um, both of these are, uh, that's the Sheps CMC6. Both of these have Omni caps on them um, for an open natural sound, which is great if your room sounds decent. And this is a pretty good sounding room. Um, so the Josephson C617 set is the last ones I've got that Corey's at right now. So. I want to get him on these because I'm most uh, fascinated by them at the moment because they're the latest ones I got. But um, both of these mic sets are, they're expensive, but not to enhance the sound. It actually costs a lot of money to show you the actual true natural sound um, without any coloring to it. I run both of these sets through GML preamps, uh, which are I can't hear them at all, which is, I've tried dozens of preamps and they each have their own sound. Like the GML preamp, it's like, I don't hear it. It's like not there. It's not part of the equation. So I love it. So anyways, let's get a uh, Corey on this uh, Petros.
So um, we just, I mean, I guess I should mention that that sounds amazing. I mean, that that tenor is like, it's pretty everything you would want out of a great ultimate tenor, right? Yeah. You know, you got the depth, you got the clarity, you got the volume, you got the sustain. The dynamic too, like between. Oh, yeah. Slight radius, it's like great feel, kind of a medium slender neck. Perfectly crafted. Nice, tasteful inlays without being gaudy in any way. It's got the side port so you get even kind of a better sound while playing it, you know, than in front of it. Rubner tuners are so smooth. Oh yeah, they are. Very smooth. And I like how the 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 buttons or the ends of the tuning keys are uniquely shaped. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the it's... things that, you know, really stands out as far as like how the tuners look and how they feel. I mean, he's like a master machinist and that's what you know precision gears give you I, l I love how it's like bound all the way up and around the headstock and everything it gives like this nice kind of complete framed look to it and that's you know on both the baritones and this tenor I gotta say it's some of the most gorgeous walnut I've seen it's beautiful so we just got in um, some new uh, Romero creations and um, a couple of the models are new for us. We sampled one of them, Daniel Ho. We did a video with Daniel Ho at the 2020 NAM. And, uh, and just now we're getting, getting the D Ho in the steel string. And we got the B6 in the steel string too. So I'm gonna bust those out. You guys can try them. So a couple of years ago, Daniel um, approached Pepe to make him a, a nylon string travel size guitar. So that, that became the DH6. And uh, Daniel plays steel along with uh, nylon. So he uh, got Pepe to do something that he'd never done before with a uh, steel string offering. This is a 21 inch scale tuned E to E. And uh, I guess you could definitely experiment with other tunings and stuff, but maybe different string sets would be required. I mean, you could probably tune this one up, what Corey, to like, uh, definitely you can tune it up to like a half step F, yeah. maybe F sharp. It gets kind of tight around G and you don't want to go any, any lower, but, um, you know, you're a full, what, four inch, four inch scale shorter than a regular guitar. So it does require like a little bit of like care and grace in terms of like keeping the sound, like, uh, like intonation all together and everything like that. What do you think, Corey? Yeah, maybe, I think maybe probably using lighter strings in a higher tuning might be the best thing to do. I mean, it's uh, not bad in E to E tuning at all. Or, but. or that set may be a little bit heavier. Like if yeah. that's a medium set, a heavy set. Because I mean, it's a lot shorter scale. What's the overall scale name? Twenty-one versus like, one, like a you know. I mean, the average acoustic guitar is going to be about twenty-five. So, so if you're going to go E to E you kind of got to go significantly heavier than it still sounds great though maybe uh the action too there's a lot of room um for work which is cool so i think maybe bringing down the action would yeah i mean like... you know one day we'll get there but like we have yet to like be caught up enough for the setup crew to be setting up the instruments that you guys are playing when you're doing these sound samples 
So part of what you guys are experiencing is the adept professionalism of musicians that know how to adjust to less than perfect setups. Why? What do you feel with that, Corey? What, what do you mean with that? Like lower? At least the nut slots. That would help mm. quite a bit. Then... It's crazy to me how like nut slots can be like high. It seems like the most obvious thing. Yeah. But it's almost, you know, like many, many manufacturers, like we still end up lowering the nut slots. But This one, it has, I guess maybe they give you room to adjust it yourself. Like when you do the initial setup, but definitely lowering that would help. It sounds like you could bring this into a studio and do some real work. Yeah, definitely. I think it would, like, maybe inspire more ideas. I mean, the size. You got, like, I mean, we should maybe bring out a regular size guitar to, like, give context. You know, you're getting a guitar sound from something s super significantly. Like, you're basically carrying around a baritone. Yeah. You're carrying on like half a guitar. <laughs> yeah, maybe like uh, three fifths. Holy crap! That last minute sold me, man. I was just like, <laughs> once you went into like the harmonics there at the end. Dang. Oh my. This thing rings very differently for harmonics, but uh. in a super good way. Like, yeah, they almost seem louder than the regular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. 
piano. Oh, <laughs> it's still going. Oh my god. It's still going. <laughs> Alright, so the other option to consider, if you love him that, is... Wait. The B6. Still going. Feels Dang. It's still going! <laughs> and then six hours later. It's like, it sounds different than a guitar. I guess like yeah. maybe it's more mellow than a guitar in a certain way. Yeah. So it kind of has its own thing, but also like the harmonics are amazing on these. Oh yeah. Like I think like the first one had slightly more um, low end on the bass strings, but then this one had a lot of amazing overtones. Yeah, like, Corey, try to play just some of the single high notes where it's just ringing. purposes but it sounds different you think it, it inspires differently Corey yeah like like you would compose something differently holding this up. yeah definitely that's always a cool thing Thank you. 
beyond working at the Ukulele site, they're owners of Anui Nui USA. And um, Kalei brought us some new instruments today. They are maybe instruments we've had before, but uh, let's close this out by getting you two to duet out on a couple Anui Nui's, which, you know, Anui Nui's are, they're, they're like a value-based brand. What you get for the money is kind of awesome, you know, and um, each one gives its own goodness. I think uh, we'll close out featuring a moonbird and what, what, Clay, what do we got? So uh, I have, I brought a UT200 moonbird tenor and a MM2 African mahogany concert. So it's going to be The fun. concert is, I mean, we've, uh, I don't know. I posted one a, a few days back. I think it might have sold already, but um, slot head, gloss, all solid wood, mm -hmm. wood bindings, Apollonie Rosette. It's just like nice all this good thing. stuff, and it's like, what is it, like 600 bucks or something? It's like 549 <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's, it comes with all the with, whistles. With that bag? Does it come with that bag? Yeah. So the, the bag, gig bag is really nice too. It's a really nice uh, deluxe gig bag, and it's uh, it's pretty protective. I I like them actually. Like sometimes I'll swap out some of my ukuleles at home and put it in one of the in those right. Cases. It's it's not a joke gig bag. It's a real gig yeah. bag. Yeah. Um, sweet. All right, let's let's do that, and uh, I'll go ahead and say my mahalo. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support, and. Uh, Thanks, boys, for rocking it like always. <laughs>